Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on Economics of Health and Education. Uh, in this uh, lesson 2 of week 3, we will look at some of the components of the Grossman model in some more detail. In the last two classes, the learners have been introduced to the demand side of healthcare economics. We have been introduced to the basic Grossman model in which we have seen that health is looked at as both a consumption good and a capital good. It is also looked at as an input in production of health. So, when we are combining the different components of health in the Grossman model, we need to understand a few more basics with respect to how these different components function in a single time period and in different time periods. So, this lesson has been uh, designed to introduce the students to the different components of the Grossman model. Now, let us begin uh, with uh, the class. We will uh, first take into consideration a single period uh, utility, how utility adds up in a uh, static point of time or a period of time. Uh, the Grossman model as we have seen starts with a simplification that in any given period an individual's utility is based on her health and other non-health goods that the consumer consumes. So, the first role health plays in the model is that of a consumption good. And the learners have been introduced to this kind of a utility function where we have seen that utility is a, a function of health goods consumed in time t or all those goods and services that go towards improvement of health in time t. And in the previous class we have also considered c and sometimes in the equation z is also considered where we consider z as some kind of other consumption goods that is consumed by the individual. So, here H T is the level of health and Z T is a composite good which represents everything else that the consumer consumes. It could range from food, housing, electricity, expenditure on agriculture. It could refer to all kinds of other goods that uh, the consumer takes pleasure in uh, doing and that might improve utility in the uh, period that we are considering. So, Z T is a composite good that represents everything else food, housing, electricity, etcetera and Z can also be referred to as the home good. So, in this lesson we will be referring to Z as home good and H as the level of health that the consumer experiences in a given period of time. So, in this health uh, in this utility function you will see that healthcare does not appear explicitly. We are considering level of health or the amount of health that is health well being that is generated in the single period uh, of time, but we are not considering healthcare explicitly in this uh, function. So, in this model medicines consumed or vaccinations taken affects utility only through health or H rather than affecting it directly. We have already been introduced to this model in a different form and we are getting to know some more details about each of these uh, components as I have specified. So, we must note here that H and Z they distinctly contribute to the utility function of the individual which means that they are positively contributing to the utility of the individual concerned here. But there may be other choices made by the individuals that simultaneously also change H and Z and such choices may result in trade offs for the individual. For example, an individual may eat uh, junk food which also contributes to uh, pleasure or utility of the individual, but this may also in the long run cause reduction in health status as it may lead to ill health and so on. So, while indulging in uh, pleasure food uh, does contribute positively to Z which is home good, but it may also cause reduction in H or the level of health. On the other hand, exercising may increase both uh, the capacity of the individual to spend on home goods as well as to experience good health in a given period of time. So, therefore, this is what we uh, think of when we say that the choices made by the individuals may also simultaneously change H and Z. Therefore, there are trade offs involved when the individual is making a choice between whether to spend more on Z or uh, spending more on those kinds of activities that result in uh, better health conditions. Now, let me uh, remind uh, the learners here that in the foundations of microeconomics that we consider for health economics, all students who have been introduced to the basic microeconomics would know that a rational individual always functions given certain constraints. Now, in a standard utility maximization model, we are considering income constraints. 
But in the case of uh, utility maximization uh, model where the consumer is making a choice between health improvement or health and well-being, uh, apart from looking at income constraints, we also look at time constraints. So, in this lesson, we will uh, learn about how an individual functions within the time constraint that is available uh, to her or him and we will also see how to specify these kinds of expressions when we talk about time constraint. We will also look at the income constraint and then we will finally bring both of these constraints together and see how an individual makes an optimal choice of consuming H and Z. So, as I just said that uh, there is a time constraint within a single period and this is what we need to understand when we are uh, investigating uh, any empirical data by utilizing the Grossman model. Now, we all know that there are uh, finite hours of time in a day, there are only 24 hours in a day and our individual has to divide her or his time exactly between four different activities. So, in any given period of time t, the individual has finite units of time at her disposal and he or she faces the following time constraint where 24 hours in a day is divided between time uh, provided to work, time spent on working, time spent on other goods or home goods, time spent on improving health H and time spent sp uh, sick. So, these are the four divisions of time that our individual has to make when he or she is functioning within the given time period uh, within which the individual has to make choices. So, we have TW, uh, TZ, TH and TS, uh, W is time spent working, Z is time spent on other goods. Uh, as I said that these other goods is the composite goods, it basically includes all kinds of expenditure uh, or spending that the consumer is doing uh, apart from uh, health improvement goods, TH is time spent improving health and TS is time spent sick. Now, each of these activities play a very important role in the Grossman model and they play a different role in the Grossman model because each of these activities contributes to work productivity. So, for example, each hour spent on TW produces income which can then be used to buy medical care which contributes to both H and Z. So, therefore, the time spent working is important for increasing both H and Z which means that the utility of the individual increases if he or uh, she is spending more time working and that is, uh, uh, that is a desirable uh, situation for the individual. Now, to produce Z, individual must spend time on Z. So, for example, uh, if an individual wants to gain more utility out of uh, pleasure inducing goods, for example, one wants to watch a movie in a theatre or one wants to spend more time on uh, video games and so on, then to produce that Z, individual must spend time on TZ. But for that, the individual has to be in a state of well-being to be able to utilize that time on spending on Z. Similarly, to produce H, the individual must spend time using health improvement goods TH. We will presently see which are the different kinds of activities that can be categorized under TW, TZ and TH. Now, among all of these activities, TS is a different kind of activity because it does not contribute to either H or Z and also it is not increasing in utility. It has an opportunity cost because each hour spent sick is an hour not spent at other things. So, being ill or being sick is not desirable. So, that involves an opportunity cost and that is a cost for the individual who is making a choice of spending her time between these different activities. So, time spent sick is therefore lost time and since there are only finite times in a day, in the Grossman model it is wasted time. Time spent sick is wasted time because it does not allow the individual to spend time on work and therefore, it does not lead to increased productivity and if you are not productive enough, you do not have enough time to spend on either H or Z and that also means that it is not uh, increasing your utility. So, in the Grossman model TS is entirely determined by H, the amount of time uh, spent on health improving goods and services and so it is not a voluntary activity. It is something which is given, if you are not experiencing good health then you are sick and it is not a voluntary activity. 
Now, as I just mentioned that here we are concerned about production of H and Z, production of good health status and production of time that has to be spent on home goods or all other goods which is shown in the form of a composite good. Now, in the usual economic model of consumer behavior, all inputs contributing to utility are directly purchased in the market. Now, in this case, neither H nor Z can be purchased in a store and the individual must combine market commodities that she purchases with personal time to produce her two inputs uh, into utility. So, here what we are saying is when we consider standard uh, economic models, uh, the consumer is making a choice between purchasing two different goods say A and B or X and Y, uh, but in this case the consumer is not directly purchasing good in the market, but she is making a choice where she has to devote her personal time to inputs that can lead to creation of good health and her consumption of home goods. So, in other words both H and Z here are distinct categories of inputs which can be divided as market goods and personal time. Now, this is an example of activities uh, in the Grossman model. Uh, this example is taken from Bhattacharya and others in 2014 and this can be uh, easily adaptable to various country contexts when we are considering what are the different activities. Uh, this is also an important example which can be utilized when we are doing time use studies in the context of developing countries because uh, time poverty or time uh, criterion is an important criterion when we think about uh, wages in the context of developing countries. Nevertheless, if we let us come back to the time uh, division that we are discussing here. So, TW could be working at a power plant, it could be working in a college, it could be working in an office, playing professional sports, teaching health economics, but what are all these activities that contribute to TW resulting in, what is the purpose of it? These activities help us to earn income so that we can purchase items that will enhance H and Z and this is something which is desirable. So, we are considering a rational individual who has to make this choice between H and Z, good health and other goods and if the individual is spending adequate amount of time in TW, then it leads to enhancement of both H and Z. Now, the time spent in other activities Z, let us say for example, doing a jigsaw puzzle or going to a theatre or logging on to social media and so on, it enhances Z which is a home goods home goods in our case or a composite good, it could refer to many other um, uh, pleasure inducing uh, goods and services. Uh, so, that also enhances Z. Similarly, time spent improving health uh, could also enhance H or uh, health well being, but being sick or TS is spending the time doing nothing at, at all and this TS is always wasted time, it does not result in enhancement of H and Z and therefore is not desirable. And when we are considering this kind of a time division, we are basically talking about days of wages lost or days of earnings lost because of an individual being TS. So, if TS in the finite units of time that the individual is spending in a day increases, then obviously the productivity declines. So, despite the similarities between uh, H and Z, there is at least uh, one important difference that is Z is a flow that is created and consumed in each period. So, it is a flow variable, the amount of time that you are spending on uh, pleasure goods or goods that give you uh, more uh, utility because of uh, personal time, because of spending more time, uh, personal time and it leads to Z, it is a flow variable that is created and consumed in each period. Whereas, health well-being or health status is a stock that accumulates or deteriorates from period to period. Now, decisions made about the individual's health 10 years ago affect uh, him or her today, just as his or her decisions today will affect her 10 years from now. So, the level of H the reflects the complete history of past inputs and decisions pertaining to health. Enjoyment from today's home good on the other hand is forgotten by tomorrow and does not contribute to uh, tomorrow's Z. So, in any given period the T, the individual allocates time or money uh, Z T stands out as 0 
you are beginning with 0 what you have consumed yesterday does not have any value today. So, you are beginning uh, with uh, 0 HT on the other hand starts out at uh, accumulated health in the uh, time period before uh, that you are uh, currently in the HT minus 1. So, HT does not start out as 0 it is a stock variable you already have a stock of good health or ill health and that adds on to your activities in the next period. And it is also modified by the health decisions and purchases individuals make during period T. So, the individual treats HT minus 1 as a given during period T because he cannot go back into the past and change her uh, health history or the decisions which determined HT minus 1. So, the, we have two uh, production functions here HT where the health in current time period T is a function of health T minus 1 or the stock of health that has accumulated in the uh, T minus 1 period. It also uh, refers to the time spent on health improving goods which is TH in time period T and also it is a function of MT which represents market inputs uh, that the consumer is spending on like vaccinations or exercising that goes into production of H in period T. And this is a production function that we have also discussed in one of in the first class on demand for health. However, there are various ways of expressing the uh, health uh, production function and this is another way in which the health production function can be expressed. Similarly, ZT is a function of time spent on uh, play or uh, pleasure inducing goods in time t and as well as jt which is the amount of money that the consumer is spending on market inputs like uh, purchasing the video games or spending on uh, tickets and so on that go into production of z in period t. So, we have two production functions here the health production function and the home good production function. So, let us have a revision of this first component that we have studied here. In the first component, we have looked at the time constraint of the individual. In a standard uh, consumer choice model, when we are understanding the uh, optimal choice that the consumer has to make between uh, purchasing two different goods or services, we are often faced with an income constraint. We rarely ever talk about a time constraint. But what is different in the context of health goods or health um, the choice that the consumer has to make between health improving goods and other goods is that the consumer is also faced with a time constraint because the, the choices that the individual is making in every period of time adds on to her or his health status over a period of time. And this is where the extended utility function uh, bears a lot of importance while we are considering time constraint within a single period or utility function of the individual in a single time period, the choices that the individual is making in every time period adds on to the utility over a over the lifespan of the individual. So, in that sense we need to also incorporate a time constraint when we are considering utility maximization by the individual when she is making a choice between a health good and other composite goods. So, which is where we have considered finite units of time, the individual is distributing her time between work spent, spent on other goods, spent improving health and time spent sick and time spent sick is a voluntary activity, it is lost time and it does not add to any productivity. We have also seen that for produ production of H and Z, uh, TW, TZ and TH uh, contributes to uh, enhancement of Z and H, but T S uh, does not contribute to production of H or Z and it is always wasted time. And uh, finally, there is one important difference between H and Z, Z is a flow variable which is created and consumed in each period, but H is a stock variable which accumulates and deteriorates from period to period. And accordingly, we have two production functions here, the health production function and the consumption good production function, which is a function H is a function of um, health in time period T minus 1 and time spent on health improving goods plus the expenditures that the consumer is making in the market that goes into production 
production of h. Similarly, the uh, home good production function is a function of time spent on generating uh, utility because of time spent on uh, z or home goods and also the expenditure that is made on market inputs that goes into the production of z. Now, after having discussed the time constraint which is an important component of the Grossman model, let us look at the budget constraint. Now, the budget constraint is considered uh, when the individual is making a choice between two or more goods and services because uh, the uh, consumer has limited avenues of incomes or limited incomes and he or she has to work within the income constraint and uh, make a choice between different goods and services and this is what is referred to as the budget constraint in microeconomics. The individual also faces a market constraint as she cannot spend more than what he or she earns. So, apart from the time constraint, the individual also has a budget constraint. Suppose that when one individual works and she earns a wage of say W units in rupees or dollars per unit of time, but her total time working period uh, T is Tw. So, then her income in uh, time period t which is given by y t is the wage rate multiplied by the units of time spent working. So, w multiplied by the wage rate multiplied by the time spent working is what will determine his or her income. Now, the Grossman model does not specify how wages are determined, but it presumes that individuals who have better education, who have better access to different resources and other factors uh, has an impact on the wages that the individual is facing in the market. So, which means that better educated individuals have better incomes. This is something we will uh, may discuss when we are discussing empirical studies, but generally the assumption in a Grossman model, it does not specify how these wages are determined or does not go into the details of the wage determination process, but there is an implicit assumption that better educated or better off individuals have better incomes and uh, therefore, they are faced with more productive time. So, in any given period, the individual can spend her income on two market inputs as we have seen that is MT and JT. Uh, there is MT and JT which goes into the production of H and uh, Z. So, here we have considered M t that goes into the production of H and J t that goes into the production of Z and there are two prices that we are faced with in the uh, market P m which is the price associated with the amount of inputs that goes into the production of H which is M t and P j is the prices that goes into the expenditure on inputs. Uh, j t that leads to production of z in a single time period. So, p m and p j represent the prices of these two goods and we are faces with a budget constraint uh, inequality where prices of m multiplied by m t and the prices of j multiplied by j t uh, is gives us an inequality expression which is w multiplied by the time devoted to work uh, t w t which is y t. Now, like all simplifications that we carry out in microeconomics, we will assume that individuals cannot save uh, leftover income to spend in future periods. So, the budget inequality becomes this simplified expression where uh, the prices of uh, health inputs and the prices of health inputs multiplied by the health inputs plus the prices of home good inputs multiplied by the home good inputs has to be spent entirely on the income. So, this is the budget constraint that the individual is faced with. And what we have to understand here is that the time and the budget constraints that the individuals are faced with are not independent of each other. They are working in tandem they are linked through the individual's decisions about time spent working. So, when the individual is making a decision about how much time to spend on work, she is making that decision under the constraint of time and budget or under the income and time constraints. So, for example, if the individual is so sick that he or she has no time to work, he or she will not be able to earn income to purchase any M or Z 
and therefore the inputs into the production of H and Z. So, the decision to work or be sick during the period of time is intricately linked to the time and budget constraints that are faced by the individual and these are two very important constraints that is to be considered when we are discussing the Grossman model with respect to production of health. Now, let us pay some attention to uh, some more attention to how to explain sick time and productive time further. Now, this relationship between health levels H and T S is intuitive. We know that the more healthier an individual is, the less time he or she will spend sick in a given period and therefore, there will be more productive time available uh, for the individual. So, here we have introduced uh, productive time T P. The intuitive relationship is that if H is high, then T S is less and then the individual is left with more productive time. Now, this productive time is of course, a complement of uh, sick time and it is a sum of time spent on the other three useful activities of work. So, let us say you have productive time T P, it is basically finite units of time that the consumer is faced with in a day minus uh, time spent being sick T S that gives rise to productive time is a combination of time spent working plus time spent on Z plus time spent on health improving goods. Now, in Grossman model there are diminishing returns to productive time for health. So, if a person is already healthy enough to have very little sick time then additional improvements in uh, health will yield little or no additional productive time. But if a person is very unhealthy, even small improvements in health can lead to substantial decreases in sick time and this is the second role of health in Grossman model where health is an input to the production of productive time. So, productive time for health is subject to diminishing returns uh, which is uh, an important uh, behavior in the context of uh, uh, consumer choice theory that uh, the more you have of a good, you would want less and less of it over a period of time. So, by that logic, uh, productive time from health also is subject to diminishing returns to health. If a person is already healthy, more and more addition of productive time will not lead to much addition in terms of a utility derived out of the productive time. Whereas, if a person is very unhealthy, even small improvements in health can lead to uh, substantial increases in productivity or decreases in sick time and therefore, increases in uh, productivity. Now, this can be understood in the form of an illness avoidance function. If you look at the uh, graph on the left hand side, you will see that this figure plots the relationship between time spent being sick on the y axis and uh, being healthy on the x axis in the Grossman model. Uh, as health improves, as health keeps improving on the x axis, the time spent sick falls, but the effect of better health on T s also shrinks as health improves. You have a downward sloping curve which is uh, convex to the origin and this point H min on the x axis shows that the individual's time sick equals the finite unit of time. Now, this uh, basically means that the individual is sick for the entire period with no time left to work or play or even seek medical care and in this way the Grossman model provides an economic definition of death. So, the individual has no productive time left and cannot generate any more health. So, she will remain at H min without being able to produce any uh, effectively anything that goes into uh, that can produce uh, Z or H during a given period of time. So, in this case where individual is still alive where H t is greater than H minimum during this period, the only way to reduce sick time is to improve health. So, any market inputs or personal time dedicated to improving health can create extra productive time in this period. So, this extra productive time can then be reinvested in T H as well as put to use in T W and T Z. So, there is an H minimum below which the individual is uh, dead or the individual will not be able to create uh, have any productive time that can be spent on H or W or Z. Okay, so, now let us recall that what we have explained currently is the three roles of health in the Grossman model where health is a consumption good, 
Uh, it contributes directly to the individual's utility function in each period. Being healthy is valuable in and of itself. Similarly, health is an input into production. It generates productive time TP, which is useful for producing more H and Z. And health is a form of capital. Unlike the home good, it endures from period to period. It can accumulate or depreciate over time. So, improvements in health today can lead to better health tomorrow. Now, having considered these two constraints, time constraints and income constraints, let us also try to understand the production possibility frontier because we talk about health production function. Let us also understand the production possibility frontier. Students of economics must have been introduced to this concept of the production possibility curve or the frontier and there is a standard production possibility frontier that we have encountered in uh, the um, study of economics. So, it basically contains different possible combinations of goods and services that are attainable within the individual's budget and time constraints. So, in our case here we are considering combinations of H and Z and uh, this uh, it looks something like this if you have two goods or bundles of goods let us say H and Z there is a point where the individual can devote all of his or her resources to production of Z or all of his or her resources to production of H and this is a typical production possibility frontier but we will presently see that it is not applicable to the Grossman model of health. Now, in this uh, production possibility frontier, this edge of the frontier is referred to as the production possibility frontier or the curve. So, all the points below the production possibility uh, frontier or on the production possibility frontier are attainable by the consumer. All the points beyond the frontier are beyond the reach of the resources of the individual. So, in a standard model of consumer decision making, if a consumer decides to devote all his or her resources to one good, he can attain a maximal level of that good either here or here. For example, if a consumer splits all his money income between books and guns, every book that the consumer buys results in less money to buy uh, guns and vice versa. Similarly, in a typical uh, production possibility frontier, an individual who devotes all his resources to H will have no resources to left to buy Z. But in Grossman model, this point P is basically unattainable because this says having to be able to attain this point Z means that the individual has no health at all and we have already seen that there is an H min which is the economic definition of mortality or death and therefore, this position is unattainable. So, in that sense, this figure of a production possibility frontier or curve will not be applicable to a Grossman model. We have to come up with something else. Now, the PPF that is consistent with the budget and time constraints of the Grossman model is will look something like this. Instead of having a production possibility frontier curve like this, we will have a production possibility frontier which looks something like this on the left hand side. At point A here, the individual is at H min and has no productive time available to spend on Z. At point B here, the individual is healthier and has some time available for productive activities, but the individual's health is still low in this uh, part of the production possibility curve. We can also refer to this as the illness avoidance function curve. So, the steep portion of the curve here, the individual is still uh, low in health and small increases in health can lead to very large increases in productive time. Bhattacharya and others in their textbook on uh, health economics referred to this zone as the uh, free lunch zone. This zone basically refers to the zone where uh, an hour spent increasing health yields more than an hour reduction in sick time. Now, at point C, the free lunch is over. One extra hour spent on health yields exactly one extra hour of productive time TP. But the individual is still not as healthy as he could be because he is not spending all his time on TH. So, this is not uh, the uh, portion of the production possibility frontier where the consumer can uh, have an optimal combination of Z and H because there is a lot of resources which he or she can spend optimally on uh, increasing Z and H. So, if he similarly, if he tries to increase Z by increasing H in an attempt to gain more productive time, he will again fail. But the point D is the 
trade off zone consisting of all points between uh, C and E and at point E the individual spends all of his time and money on health. Now, how does the individual choose the optimal mix of H and Z? Yeah, as in many consumer uh, demand model, any consumer demand model, the individual picks H and Z to maximize his utility subject to the budget constraint he faces. Now, in this case, we have time constraint and the budget constraint. So, suppose the individual picks A or B in the free lunch zone, he can simultaneously increase H and uh, Z by uh, shifting resources around. Because H and Z are both positive inputs in his utility function, he never finds it optimal to be in this free lunch zone where he can shift still shift around resources to increase both H and Z. So, here although uh, the individual is a free lunch zone, um, the individual will not consider this as an optimal combination because there is still scope for increasing H and Z. It is not optimal to have a free lunch zone because allocations in the free lunch zone do not take advantage of all opportunities that can still increase H and Z. So, no one who values H and Z would ever choose allocations, optimal allocations between the point A to uh, C. But the optimal allocation will be in the trade off zone on the production possibility front, which is any combination between C and E. This is the trade off uh, zone on the production possibility frontier and the exact location will of course depend on the individual's taste for health and home good. So, as the individual moves from point A to point E, this is the uh, zone, the free lunch zone where the individual still has the capacity to increase more H and Z because remember the individual is making a choice between increasing more of H and Z because that is utility enhancing in nature. So, this is the trade off zone between C and E where the individual will make a choice between what will be the combination of Z and H that he or she will consume, but then that that will depend upon what is the utility function of the consumer uh, that uh, she will be experiencing when she is considering the trade off zone. So, now let us also consider single period indifference curves. We have already uh, briefly introduced indifference curves to the learners. Uh, we have seen that indifference curves basically tells us the different combinations of goods and services that the individual wants to choose uh, in a given uh, period of time. And each of the indifference curve uh, tells us what is the utility that the individual is deriving out of those combinations of goods and services. So, in this figure here, you would see that the individuals consider trade offs between H and Z across time periods. For simplicity, we have assumed a trade off in a single time period here, and there are three indifference curves U0, U1, and U2, and each of these indifference curves. Uh, depicts different levels of utility. The highest indifference curve is always desirable by the consumer, but uh, there is a constraint, there is a resource constraint which is given by this uh, production possibility frontier here. Any of the points on U2 where the individual has to make a choice between Z and H is unattainable because this is beyond the resources of the individual. Uh, U0 is attainable, but it is inside the PPF, this is inside the PPF and hence there are, this is not an optimal combination because the individual still has more resources to uh, find an optimal solution which will increase both H and Z. So, the allocation represented by F which is the tangency point of the indifference curve and the PPF, the production possibility frontier generates the highest utility level possible and the optimal combination chosen here is the H star and the Z star combination which occurs at the tangency of the trade off uh, zone of the production possibility frontier and the indifference curve that the individual is faced with. Now, having so there are three components that we have studied now of the Grossman model. We have looked at the time constraint, we have looked at the budget constraint, we have understood that the production possibility frontier in the case of a uh, choice being made between uh, Z and H. Uh, does not look like a typical production possibility frontier as we have seen in the case of market goods and services that the consumer chooses. Uh, and we have also seen how the consumer makes an optimal choice between H and Z in a given period of time. Along with this, let us now also discuss the labor leisure trade off or health improvement trade off that is often discussed in uh, this context. 
Now, in order to allocate resources between H and Z, the individual first allocates his time across these four activities as we have understood TW, TZ, TH and TS. Now, when the individual is making the choice of allocating her time between these four activities, this is a complex process, it is a complicated process. But the problem is simplified when we consider individual's current health as given because we have understood health as a stock variable which means that today's health is dependent upon the health accumulated in time period T minus 1. So, after suffering sick time, an individual then allocates productive time between TW, TZ and TH. This is also what we have understood when we are considering productive time. Now, usually we hold TH fixed and study the decision between TW and TZ in two dimensions and this trade-off is usually shown in the form of an indifference curve. We hold TH fixed because as I have mentioned that it is a stock variable and so the time spent on H is already decided, uh, the health improvement goods that we are spending on is already decided and it can be considered fixed. So, then the trade-off can be shown in the form of an indifference curve. This is what we usually call as the work leisure trade-off, uh, the uh, y-axis uh, time spent working and the uh, uh, x-axis time spent on leisure goods and services. So far, I have been referring to uh, play goods or home goods. In the literature, we can also refer to TZ as leisure uh, goods and services and there is often this uh, in the context of labor markets, uh, labor economics and health uh, productive time contributing to labor force participation, we look at trade-offs between uh, work and leisure trade-offs. So, once sick time or TS and health improvement TH are set, the individual then allocates the remaining time between work and leisure. So, in this case here, this is the time constraint that the individual is faced with this is the time constraint, this is the indifference curve of the individual uh, and she can he or she can choose any combination of work and uh, leisure on this and usually the uh, point of tangency of the time constraint and the indifference curve decides what will be the optimal allocation of time by the consumer. So, the individual in question here is allocating some time to both work and leisure. When health improves, more productive time is available and the individual can spend more time both at work and leisure and graphically the individual's time constraint can shift outward. So, currently we have this time constraint. We can also when the individual's time constraint shifts outward because of having more productive time, then the individual can be on a higher indifference curve. The individual can spend more time uh, on W and uh, Z and therefore have a more uh, increased utility at a point higher when the time constraint, when the individual sick time declines or TH increases and is left with more productive time, then the time constraint can also shift outwards and as therefore, the consumer's utility can also improve. Now, here we have considered uh, the single period utility function. As I have discussed in uh, the first class on demand for health, that uh, there is an extended utility function and utility when the consumer is making a choice between uh, Z and H, she or he is generating utility in each period and the utility gets added on over a period of time or during the lifespan. So, in Grossman model, the individual values health and home goods in every single period of his life. So, we can consider an extended utility function which we have discussed earlier, but we can look at a little more detail uh, in this lesson here. Here, utility is a function of H and Z in time period uh, 0 to time period omega here, where H t is the level of health in period time, time ranging from 0 to omega periods. Z t is the amount of home good in period t and omega is the length of the lifespan in period. In uh, many empirical studies have been carried out where individuals can actually choose this omega, the lifespan that the individuals uh, want to generate utility in each period of time, but we can ignore that for the time being. But what we uh, need to understand here is that H t is the level of health in each of these periods. So, the functional form of utility is such that each period produces a flow of utility that contributes to the overall lifetime utility which can be expressed as follows, where it is a function of uh, H 0, Z 0 uh, plus delta H 1, Z 1. 
uh, delta square h2 z2 here the uh, component uh, the uh, the parameter delta here uh, may be any time between any uh, value between 0 to 1 which basically tells us the individual's discount factor and we need this discount factor to represent the fact that the individual values the current utility flow more than he or she values the same amount of utility flow in any future period now there is one uh, last component which we need to introduce as part of the Grossman model which is called the marginal efficiency of health capital curve. Uh, recall that we have considered health as a capital good, so which means that it can be used as an investment to produce more health in a future period of time. So, in that sense there is returns to the investment as well which is captured with the concept of the marginal efficiency of health capital. Uh, another way of saying it is an investment with its own rate of return. One particular feature of health is that at low levels of health, we have discussed at low levels of health, small investments can have greater returns to productive time of the individual. Now, what happens to an individual's lifetime utility when her health in any one period is magically increased by a small amount? Now, this increase in health can have repercussions on her health and utility level in each period for the rest of her lifespan. So, the total increase in lifetime utility is the return to this increase in health but also depends on the individual starting level of health. So, the marginal lifetime returns to health are high at low levels of health and low at high levels of health and the marginal lifetime returns to health change with the initial level of health and this is shown by the marginal efficiency of capital curve. So, here in the figure you can see uh, there is a rate of return uh, to investment on health on the x axis we have health the marginal efficiency of health capital curve captures all the lifetime return from marginal investment in health at any given level of health stock it is a downward sloping curve which reflects diminishing marginal returns to health uh, on the x axis on the y axis uh, we show uh, the market investment opportunities uh, that are foregone and the individual's depreciation of health gamma due to aging. So, high R and uh, low gamma lower the individual's optimal level of health and empirical evidence uh, have consistently found that the more educated enjoy better health than the less educated. So, uh, for example, if we compare a college going graduate and a dropout, we will see that the marginal efficiency curve of a college going graduate will be higher than the dropout. So, MSc is always higher for better educated individuals which has been consistently uh, found in the case of uh, in, uh, in various empirical studies. So, the marginal efficiency of capital increases uh, when the returns on investment uh, is higher for better educated individuals. In the next class when we are studying uh, the different hypothesis of uh, demand for health, we will see how empirical studies have shown that because of unobservable variables such as patients, uh, people who are more uh, educated or better educated make better choices with respect to uh, disease conditions or self-health management which leads to greater returns on their health investment. Now, uh, let us conclude this lesson by discussing or unifying the Grossman model. We have studied different components of the Grossman model in some detail. We have looked at the time constraint, the budget constraint, the production possibility frontier. We have looked at uh, uh, Z as a flow uh, variable, health as a stock variable. We have also seen that utility created out of uh, health in a single period adds on to utility generated in the next period for the entire lifespan. So, we have looked at the extended utility function, but what is the purpose of looking at each of these components? So, we need to unify the different components of the Grossman model. Let us consider each of these elements in a cohesive manner. We have seen the production possibility frontier, which basically represents the trade-offs between H and Z. It shows the maximum combinations of health and other goods that can be produced given the available resources and technology with the consumer. Uh, we studied about the marginal efficiency of capital curve which shows the relationship between level of health capital and the marginal benefits derived from investing in health and it typically slopes downward indicating diminishing returns to health investments. 
we have studied the time constraint uh, which uh, tells us that individuals have a limited amount of time which they allocate between work, leisure and health related activities and this constraint affects the amount of time available for both producing health and earning income. We have also seen there is an income constraint which represents the budget limitation of the individuals, income spent on health investments or other goods. Now, when we want to unify these components, to unify these components, we can consider the individual's optimization problem within the constraints of time and income. The individual aims to maximize their utility which depends on both their health capital and consumption of other goods. We can have a step by step breakdown. This is an example step by step breakdown. Uh, so, in step 1 we can define the utility function which we have already done in the beginning of the class where utility is a function of H and Z, health uh, status or health well being or health improvement goods and Z. Then we have time constraint given by uh, the equality time spent on work, leisure and TH as health. Income constraint which is uh, wages, wage rate multiplied by time spent uh, working. Uh, income which is investment uh, on uh, goods on health and consumption on uh, Z goods. Similarly, we have a health production function where health is a function of time spent on health and investments made on health. The marginal efficiency of capital uh, which can be derived from the production function which gives us the return on health investments and then we set an optimization problem where the individual's objective is to maximize utility uh, HZ subject to the time constraint, the income constraint and the uh, health uh, production function and then using a Lagrangian method the one can solve for the optimization problem. So, what we have done in today's class is to bring the different components of the Grossman model together to understand the comparative statics of the uh, Grossman model, how to uh, think of the Grossman model in terms of utility maximization. The objective of the consumer is to maximize her utility with respect to health and other goods and to be able to maximize her utility, uh, how the individual makes an optimal choice regarding the trade-off that involves um, consumption of uh, H or production of H and Z and we have seen that with the help of uh, the different uh, components of time constraint, income constraint, marginal efficiency of capital and the production possibility frontier and the individual's indifference curve during a single period of time, we can bring all of these together to carry out the optimization problem with regard to utility maximization. So, we will uh, end today's class with this discussion. In the next class, we will uh, study about the different hypothesis surrounding demand for health that goes on to explain the health disparities that is experienced by the individuals. Uh, for this class, uh, I have used a major reference which is uh, the Bhattacharya Hyde and Two textbook on uh, the Palgrave Macmillan Health Economics. Uh, with this, I will see you in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.